Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Archetype, Gem Knight. Okay, so I just want to say this is a new series now, and in this series of historic archetypes, I'm going to be talking about archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh! that have been historic to this game's history and legacy that they've left behind, what they've inspired, what things that they have done for Yu-Gi-Oh!'s game as a whole, and that's essentially it. So we'll go to the three points that you can see in front of you. One, key cards. Two, the best competitive engine of all time. And three, legacy. So let's go to the first point. One, key cards. So let's go to the next slide and see the key cards in the Gem Knight archetype. This is Gem Knight Lady Lap. Pis Lazuli, Brilliant Fusion, Gem Knight Master Diamond, and Gem Knight Lady Brilliant Diamond. Indeed, Gem Knight Lapis Lazuli is the first, I would say, archetype burn strategy that we've seen in Yu-Gi-Oh. I find this rather odd. Usually burn strategies in Yu-Gi-Oh are miscellaneous cards, uh, cards such as Cannon Soldier, the Archer card, I believe, the Cannon Soldier series, and such sort of cards. There were burn cards which were miscellaneous, they were not really related to anything, and they were never part of an archetype. This is where gem knights completely, as Konami would put it, threw a wrench and put a gem into our hearts and minds for players. This was the first archetype that its entire win strategy is a burn strategy. It's basically an FDK. It's its entire win strategy, it's its entire uh, philosophy. We would, hmm, little did we realize that in the future, gimmicks would also, uh, also have this strategy. I've got a lot of worries for the rest of the meta. Anyways. Um, talking about the dark times of the future that we are in now. But in the past, again, Gem Knight Lapis Lazuli was the first archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh's existence to adopt a strategy of a whole focus strategy of just burn damage. We have Brilliant Fusion. Brilliant Fusion is very interesting here. As Brilliant Fusion is a card that is part of the best engine of all time definitely we'll talk about that in part two but in general brilliant fusion has been used in so many other decks except gem knight itself and definitely can be considered one of the best fusion spells of all time as it's been in a lot of competitive decks and just been splashed everywhere it truly is quite brilliant if i do say so myself Laugh at my joke, I'm funny. We have Gem Knight Master Diamond. Again, Gem Knight Master Diamond and Gem Knight Lady Brilliant Diamond are some of these cards that just allow you to just copy effects. Now, again, the ability to copy effects is quite powerful. We all know copying can lead to a lot of broken things. And one thing I need to note here, one thing we need to mention here, is that the copying of effects is something that's always been powerful. And I believe this is the first time we've seen in Yu-Gi-Oh's history anyway, we've seen a card with this effect, right? Although this card would not get banned, we did have uh, another fusion monster, which was Starving Venom, which could copy any monster's effect. That did get banned, as that was part of an FTK. Hmm, I wonder why. That's really convenient. But anyways... Copying effects is something that was introduced with Gem Knight Master Diamond and is something that we see in Yu-Gi-Oh's history are very powerful cards. Fun fact, this is the only card in Yu-Gi-Oh today that has a copying effect and is still legal and is not banned. This is quite interesting and definitely uh, showcases that copying effects in general, whether in OCG and TCG, all of them are banned. The, yeah, so that's one thing to note here. 
we have gem knight lady brilliant diamond and with this effect it's quite it's uh, all same fusion requirements as master diamond and it just allows you to just special summon any other fusion uh gem knight fusion monster from your extra deck ignoring so many conditions a great extender you know definitely facilitating that fdk that you want to do and we can definitely see from gem knight lady lapis lazuli this burn of whatever whatever it is we can see that it facilitates that uh burn fdk that we see all too prevalent these are the key cards i would say that is in the gem knight archetype these are the cards that you will see summoned the most often and these are the cards that epitomized what gem knights do today sure they do have they did get a link monster at the time but essentially the link monster and everything involved just focused on just the burn fdk and that's all the focus was primarily on let's move on to the next part to speak more about the historic ability of gem knights two the best competitive engine of all time indeed and now we're going to uh, we're going to talk about the engine what it consists and what it does and so if you look here we can see right the engine and what it entails gem knight garnet brilliant fusion gem knight lazuli and gem knight seraphonite now seraphonite is extremely important obviously you'd have a light monster um you can choose the lazuli i don't think it'll be there we can just choose it you could use any other light monster but the point is is to make gem knight seraphonite it would be an additional summon these were things that you would it would give to any deck and gem knight seraphonite do not be fooled you have to remember that double summon is a spell card but if double summon was part of your extra deck that would be a whole different ball game i like the word free do you know why it means i can do silly things for no reason this is why gem knight seraphonite was so powerful giving every deck the ability to just have an additional summon was extremely powerful it being the best engine of all time gem knight garnet was so bad that it's become part of uh yugioh vernacular part of the yugioh colloquialism and a bad card in your engine is called a garnet yes my friends this is why this is the best engine of all time facts to this very day we call bad cards in your engines garnets named after gem knight garnet that you never wanted to draw that's when you know an engine is special when it can enter uh yugioh vernacular yugioh colloquialism and can be part of officially part of the yugioh library of words indeed it is just that powerful it's just that good so bear that in mind being the best engine of all time you have gem knight seraphonite giving you an additional summon it's double summon in your extra deck which you can access all the time there's not really much i've got to say here so let's move on to the legacy part three three legacy indeed gem knights especially but most importantly brilliant fusion has left a legacy on this game um there's just something about brilliant fusion that has been used so much so effectively and having just a double summon indeed has just changed the way uh things have gone about in Yu-Gi-Oh in terms of engines we have had a link monster again that had the ability of gem knight um seraphonite which was nightmare goblin and unfortunately that card is banned just going to show that giving a giving an additional summon and making it easy to access in your extra deck is just not the way it being a link monster shows that it's just banned however when it was a fusion monster with the same effect uh seraphonite wasn't banned we banned brilliant fusion instead so indeed that is the case that is something that we need to take note here and something 
that we need to realize about the legacy of gem knights. Gem knights have left a legacy, a legacy of introducing the best engine of all time and really introducing to us as players that archetypes can be used as engines, that we can have different ways to play the deck. Obviously, we've had engines before, but these have not been of a archetype nature. They've just been singular cards. Maybe cards that were just really good, like Mirror Force or, you know, Mass Driver in the Frog FDK at this point. We had, like, individual cards that were broken that we as players discovered, but we didn't have an archetype. We didn't have a series of cards that we could use to facilitate an FDK and that's something that's very important. This is something that us players found out by ourselves. This is something that we incorporated into other decks and indeed Gem Knight, uh, a Brilliant Fusion, sorry I would say, is the blueprint of how we players both in OCG and TCG would be using engines going forward. We would slim them down to the utmost bare essentials and get exactly the desired outcome of what we needed in our decks. At that time we needed a Gem Knight Seraphonite which gave us a double summon and that is what we would get all the time. Seraphonite was extremely good in decks such as Monarchs. Monarchs I believe used Seraphonite so well so good and that's all we've really got to say about this. Let's Enter our conclusion. All right, conclusion. And so, what are the closing statements when all this? Well, that the ability of Gem Knights and the historic element that is put for the game is extremely massive. This is the first archetype, again, that has been part of the competitive scene. That the cards that we it is Brilliant Fusion is one of the most famous cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! history as this is a card that has been used in countless decks, countless strategies. Even though the strategy is, has been the same, even though the strategy of it has just been to just do a simple thing of just give your deck an additional summon. But it is with these simple things that they are the most dangerous. And I believe this is one of the reasons why this card was, Brilliant Fusion was never hit, limited, or banned. It was seen as an innocent thing by both OCG and TCG. It wasn't really, this wasn't like a negate or an omni negate or things like that. It wasn't, it wasn't seen at the time that this was a very strong strategy. You're only just doing an additional summon. Um, it's not, it's not a big deal, I think most of the R&D team uh, thought. There's no way that I'd ever believe you! But the more uh, it was it was played, the more you see Gem Knight Seraphonite being put into decks that it had no business being in there, we see that giving every single deck an additional summon can sometimes spiral things to become out of control. In Monarchs, for example, just that additional summon meant that you could do things that you couldn't do before. The deck was less prone to breaking, and they had less garnets in their deck. But the point is, is that Brilliant Fusion and all the things involved in this engine were part of what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! special, part of what makes this game, playing it, really cohesive, really comprehensive. And sometimes in Yu-Gi-Oh, especially when you're creating decks, it's always great that you can find engines that you can use for yourself. And sometimes past engines could be used and could be part of history that could be made in the future. And I think that's it really. So tune in next time as we will talk about other historic archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh! and what their influence has been on the game as a whole. Hope to see you soon. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer 
to come in a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. 